Hey, welcome guys. This is Mr. Sheelan. Oop, and I need to turn off the light here. Give me a second. Just so we don't have as much glare on the on the paper here. So, okay, sorry about that. Welcome to the Check Your Understanding video for the 3.3 notes. Uh, this is going to be the Check Your Understandings one through four for the friction notes uh, that that I told you I'd make a different separate video for. It. Okay. Now remember, before I get into this, I want you guys to to do this on your own first. I want you to give it a try. Give it the old college try. And, and see how far you can get. See if you can take the material you, you learned in the notes and solve these for yourself. Okay, it's not to say that they're going to be easy, but you should try them on your own. So if you haven't done so already, please pause the video, go through, check your understandings numbers one through four, uh, and then come back and, and uh, uh, see how it is I do each of these, okay? All right. So let's take a look at uh, number one here. So number one, check your understanding number one is going to be about the crate. So, okay. So a crate fish that has a mass of 18 kilograms rests on the floor of a park delivery truck. The coefficients of friction between the crate and the floor are equal to, and that's that little symbol there's mu by the way, uh, this little guy. That's called, oh, sorry, that's called mu. That's what that is, okay. And that's, that's just, a, that denotes our coefficient. And the coefficient for static friction is going to be 0 0.450, while the kinetic uh, uh, coefficient is going to be equal to 0 0.410. The local value of gravitational acceleration is the typical 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. And here is what we're solving for. What are the force of friction and the acceleration if a horizontal force of 75 newtons is pushed to the east uh, and a horizontal force of 95 newtons uh, applied to the east? So first thing that we should be doing, and this is pretty much true for all the problems, uh, the first two things that we need to do we need to establish what we know and what we don't know, and part of establishing what we know and what we don't know is also writing or drawing our free body diagram. So let's just kind of go through real quick. So we've got mass of 18.0 kilograms. We have static coefficient, static friction coefficient of 0 0.450, kinetic at 0.410. We have gravity, acceleration due to gravity at 9.8 meters per second squared. We have an applied force that's going to be applied force 1, 75 newtons, specifically to the east. We have an applied force 2, which is going to be 95 newtons to the east. Okay. So, and then, and then what are we looking for here? So remember, we're looking for friction forces. So we're looking for the, you know, we're looking for the static friction, realistically speaking, the max static friction. We're looking for the kinetic. If there's kinetic, we're looking for kinetic friction here. And not only that, we are looking for acceleration in both uh, the first motion and second motion here. Okay or even if we will have acceleration, we'll see. Okay, so here's what we know, here's what we don't know, perfect. Uh, what, do we, what do we have here? What, what kind of, what's the picture looking like here? Well, it's gonna be simply a crate. Let's see. And this is gonna be, let's just focus in on the, the, I guess on question number one here, like the, or the first point of it, the horizontal force was 75. Let's just draw that, so. Applied one is going to be 75 newtons, and it's to the east. Okay, we're trying to figure out if we'll have, you know, or what the static friction is here, and will we have a kinetic friction? We'll see. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we don't have the force due to gravity, but we do have the mass, which is going to be 18.0 kilograms. We do have that don't have that and we don't have the normal force. OK, 
Okay, so we can see what we're missing. Okay, and we could actually even add those over to the side here. We don't have the normal force and we don't have the force due to gravity, which remember, normal force and the force due to gravity, in this case, because it's a, it's a, level, it's a level surface it's sitting on, or at least it's implied it's a level surface, these will equal one another. So we can say, we can say this. Okay, these, these will be the same. Okay, but we still don't know them yet. So that's, that's, I know that seems kind of goofy, but we don't know the normal force. We don't know the gravitational force yet. So maybe let's just do that because we've got everything we need to solve for that. So we know that just force in general is, is going to be F times, or F is equal to M times A. And that's no different to, you know, force of gravity. It's going to be mass times the acceleration, in this case, due to gravity. So it'll be F of G is equal to the mass, which is 18 times 9.8. And that's going to give us a number of 176.4 newtons. Okay, now that's not our answer, obviously, but it is crucial information that we needed. So now we can say that we have the normal force and also the force due to gravity have that information 176.4 newtons okay so we're, we're off to a good start here okay so now what do we need to do well what we need to do now because again we're, we're wanting to see what are we trying to do again well the ultimate goal is to see what the friction force is the static friction force is we're then trying to see if, if the thing will, go, will, will have motion, if, if the amount of applied force is enough to get this crate moving. And if it is, we're trying to then see what the static coefficient, or sorry, what the, what the uh, kinetic friction will be. And then we're going to see what, find out and figure out what the um, acceleration that this thing is moving at is. Okay. So let's then then let's do that. Let's see let's see what the friction force is. Let's see what the maximum friction force, static friction force is going to be. What is the amount of force we need to overcome here? So to do that, we're going to use our good old newly learned static coefficient is going to be equal to the static friction divided by the normal force. Okay, static friction force divided by the normal force. Now remember, we're trying to find this guy. And if we look up here, we have mu, mu of s, we've got that. So to find this, we're just going to pop that guy up there so that we've got the static friction force is equal to our coefficient times our normal force. So we'll plug those in. So again, this one's going to be this guy up here, 0 0.450 times the normal force, which again is going to be the 176.4 newtons. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned in the notes, the coefficients don't have any units to them. It's, I know that's weird, but they don't have any units. Okay. So, and then what we get here, we'll get the, we'll multiply these together. And the answer we should get here is 79.4 newtons. And specifically, this is going to be to the west. Okay. And again, this is also our max. So this is the force that we need to overcome uh, in order to get this thing moving. So... Let's ask the question now. When we first applied 75 newtons worth of force to the eastward direction, was it enough to get this moving? Well, we have to overcome this number. Now, let me ask you, is 75 greater than or, or, or less than 79.4? Obviously, it's, it's lower, it's, it's, it's lesser. So because, so because the, the, uh, the applied force is, is lower, it's lesser than, the static friction, the max static friction force, there's no motion. So what we would say here is that the force applied, we, well, I shouldn't get into that, I guess, or I'll just make a note of it. So if we, if this is what we have to overcome, and this is what the, this is the amount of force we put into it, that means that the static friction is actually equal to, to this, but we still need to overcome this to get it moving. So do we have motion here for number one? no motion so no no motion so no acceleration but we did find out what the force of friction is and we do have the 
we do have this. So we've got to overcome the 79.4, excuse the bell. We've got to get over this guy. So this would be your answer for number one. So no motion, so no acceleration. But we do have uh, static friction force. We don't have oops, we don't have a kinetic friction force because we don't have a moving object. So we're going to use some of this information up here to then answer the second part of this. So the second part of it is going to be this 95. So we're going to try it again, but we're going to push a little bit harder. Okay. Now clearly, as we know now, because we'll redraw our free body diagram, of course, now we're going to have a greater amount of, of force in this direction. How do we know that? Well, our force applied here, our second applied force is going to be 95, and we have to overcome this. We have to overcome 79.4 newtons. Obviously, which one's higher? Our new applied force is going to be higher. Okay, and let me just finish writing all this out. Okay, so we know that this is going to be higher than this. We've got motion. We're moving in this direction. But what do we do with this information? What we have to do with this information is now we've got to figure out, well, what's, what's the net force here? What is the net force? Okay. I'm pushing this amount of force this way, but there's this amount of force going this way. So ultimately, what's the net force in my x direction here, specifically to the east? And how you find that, it's going to be the, the net force is equal to the second applied force minus your, minus your, your static friction. Okay. Let me double check my notes here. Ah, well, it would be, okay. So here's, here's the difference, though before I get too far into this. So here's here's the difference. So now you could do this, but you, you aren't finding exactly the, the net force. Like this, at least ulti the ultimate net force, it's it's difficult to explain. So so I almost I almost kind of continue on this tangent. So what you would find here is the net force, the exact net force that this would be what that would be applied uh, or that would be yeah, applied at the moment that you you went from from static to to no motion to motion, which is an answer. It's not the answer this question is really looking for though. So if you did do this, um, if you did do this, that's fine as long as you you make the you you acknowledge the fact that this is at you know this is the force applied at the moment in which uh, uh, at the moment in which it goes from not moving to moving. Okay, but again, it's really not what we're looking for here, so I'm going to forget that. What we actually need, sorry, is we need this, because we now know that this is going to be in motion. What we need to know specifically is what the kinetic friction force is going to be. Okay, because then that's going to give the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate net force that we need. So what that would be would be the net force is equal to the applied force minus the kinetic friction force. Now, of course, we don't have this guy yet, so we've got to find it. So the coefficient is going to be 0 0.410. Uh, we still have a normal force, the same normal force. It's 176.4 newtons. Okay. What else do we need? Well, well, that's pretty much for now. That's all we need. Okay, but we're still going to ultimately also find the acceleration. Okay, and then also the kinetic friction force. And also the, the net force, because with the net force, we're going to be, that's where we're going to find the acceleration. So let's solve for this guy. So to solve for that, it's going to be the coefficient of kinetic force is equal to the kinetic friction force divided by the net force, which is going to be just like up top. So to solve for it, it'll be f of k is equal to u of k times f of n. Plug everything in, 0 0.410 times 176.4. And it looks like our kinetic friction force is going to be, 
let's see here, check my notes. It is going to be 72.3, excuse the bell, 72.3 newtons. So as we're applying this 95 newtons and we're in motion, there's a kinetic force opposing this motion and it's worth 72.3 newtons. Also notice smaller, okay, notice that smaller or the kinetic is smaller than the, than the static. So, okay, so now we've got the motion or we've got the force needed to continually move this guy and we've got the static or the, the, oh my goodness, the kinetic friction that's trying to stop it while it's in motion. So what do we do? Now we gotta go to this guy. So the net force is going to be equal to, again, the second applied force minus the static, or sorry, the kinetic friction force so it is going to be 95.0 minus 72.3. So overall, we are going to have here, okay, we are going to have here 22.7 newtons worth of force being applied in the eastward direction. Okay, so this is kind of part, or this is gonna be part of our answer. Where do we go from here? We need to know acceleration so simply our typical force is equal to mass times acceleration here only this time we're solving for for acceleration so to get acceleration all by its lonesome we're going to divide both sides by by mass so then we're left with acceleration is equal to f net divided by m and then that's going to turn it to this it will be 22.7 divided by our 18 and it looks like our answer here will be 1.26 meters per second in the eastward direction. And there you have it. And, and so the answers that I would be looking for would be the, the uh, kinetic friction here and also the acceleration. Okay, so it's accelerating 1.26 meters per second to the eastward direction but you have a continuous 72.3 newtons worth of friction force opposing, which arguably this really should have the direction of west on it as well. Okay, almost forgot to put that in. So that's number one. I know, isn't it just so great how long these are? <laughs> I don't know how long this video is so far, but I'm sure I'm already 15 minutes in and we've still got three more to go. Now the second one should be a little bit quicker since we've you know, I don't have to walk through it as much. So let's take a look here. So in the horizontal starting, uh, starting area of a four-person bobsled race, the four athletes with a combined mass, including their outfits of 295 kilograms, exert a minimum force, horizontal force of 41 newtons forward to get the 315 kilogram sled to begin moving. After the sled has traveled almost 15 meters, all four people jump into the sled and the sled then experiences a kinetic friction of with a magnitude of 66 newtons. Determine the coefficients of both the static and the uh, kinetic friction here. Okay, so it's a lot of information, but realistically speaking, it's really not that spooky. We have to take it slow, understand what's happening here, and, and tackle this piece by piece. Okay, so let's just identify what we know. So. Notice though that they specifically talk about the difference between the mass of the athletes and the mass of the sled separately. And they also mention that, that and of course if you know anything about bobsled, you've got to get your sled moving before you jump in. So to overcome the static friction, uh, we only need to worry about the mass of the, uh, of the, of the sled. So we're going to separate these two. So the mass of the athletes, as they said, is 295 kilograms. Okay. which between four guys, that's, wow, that's, that's incredible, with their outfits on. Okay, now, these athletes are applying a force of 41 newtons forward. Okay, then there's the mass of the sled, and the mass of the sled here is going to be 315 kilograms. Now, they toss this in here. We'll see if we'll have to do anything with this, but they talk about how they move 15, you know, they or that the... Uh, um, after the sled has traveled 15 meters, they then jump in. We'll see if we have to do anything with that. 
And then what we're looking for here is that we're looking for, uh, or sorry, what we do have also is that they give us the friction, uh, or the, the kinetic friction force, which is 66 newtons. And this happens to be backwards. Okay. And do they give us anything else? So, oh yeah, so they kind of give us something else here. So notice, what, notice how, how this is worded. In a horizontal starting area of a four-person bobsled race, four athletes, blah, 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 exert a minimum, minimum, minimum horizontal force of 41 newtons to get this bobsled moving. Now, it doesn't mention a constant velocity, but what's implied here is that the word minimum will refer to the minimum amount of force needed to get this rolling. So, so what does that mean? Well, it means that that's the max, more or less. This is, this is referring to, to that part of the notes where I talked about where, you know, your applied force, if, it's, if, it, if your applied force is equal to your, um, if it's equal to your static friction force, you can and will have movement. Um, so, so here is one of those examples. So, so the applied force was 41, and that was a minimum. So that must mean then that, that this is being applied consistently, and that our, our static friction force was 41 newtons backwards. And I know that sounds kind of weird. It sounds so weird and plausible at the same time. Uh, maybe it's just confusing to you. But again, we'll, we'll continue to practice this. And, and, but but it, it's those, those key words that, that provide context of what's happening. So, so always got to keep in mind those keywords. Okay, so we're going to focus in on the first problem. So that's, that's looking for the static coefficient. Well, sorry, the, the, the static friction force here, which for the most part we've pretty much already, um, well, we found the, the static friction. Sorry, we're looking for the coefficient, duh. So we're going to look for the static coefficient, but we're also looking for the kinetic coefficient. What else don't we have? Well, we don't have the force due to gravity for for the athletes. We don't have the stat. We don't have the force due to gravity on the sled, and then we don't have the force due to gravity of everybody. I'll even say we don't have the mass of everybody, which we can easily calculate. But but that'll be part. That'll be you know in in, in the part two, the kinetic friction part. So let's just focus on the static. So here's our sled, okay, so we've got an applied force of 41 newtons and we have a static friction force of 41 newtons as well. We also have the mass, and remember this is just of the sled because no one's inside of the sled yet. We need to find the normal force and the force due to gravity, which again, we can find this first. So force due to gravity is equal to the mass, which again is gonna be 315 times 9.8, which it looks like this sled is going to have a force of 3,087 Newtons. So that's gonna be both our, our gravitational force and also our normal force, oops, and our normal force here. And hopefully you can already start seeing what we need to do. Well, we're looking for the static coefficient, and to do that, we need uh, the we need the static friction force divided by the normal force. So we've got both of these already. Just this one took a little bit of thinking to get. So 41 divided by the normal force, which is 3,087. So this is going to be pretty low. And it looks like our static coefficient force is going to be, or our static, sorry, static friction coefficient is going to be 0 0.013. So that answers the first part. So let's now try to get the second part. Okay. So the second part is asking about the kinetic friction uh, coefficient. So, so we've got motion. Um, now, now we've got motion here. It's, it's, 
let's see. Ah, but what's implied here? Now we could we could find out what the kinetic friction is, the, or the kinetic fr co friction coefficient is, with just the sled between just the you know the mass of the sled and, um, uh, what's the word? Well, we should have enough. Do we have enough information? Actually, we don't have enough information because we don't know. We're not given the the kinetic. Uh, we're given the kinetic friction, but the, we're given the kinetic friction after everyone's jumped in, which we, I, we it's possible to find it. But anyway, what the point is is that that we're given the the friction force after everyone's been, everyone's jumped in. So so which is an important distinction to make. So that means then we're using the total mass, and the total mass here is going to be the 295 plus 315. So our, our total mass used here, I've got it written down already, the total mass used here is going to be 610 kilograms, which real quick, we've already done it, but 610 times 9.8, it's going to give you 5,978 newtons for gravitational uh, force. So F of G is going to be 5,978 newtons. Normal force is going to be 5,978 newtons. Okay. We have a friction force, a kinetic friction force here of 66. We don't need to know what the applied force is, and arguably, and actually, I wrote this in, but this is actually quite incorrect. Do we have an applied force anymore after everyone's jumped in? Nope. So this would be wrong to actually include that. Okay, everyone's jumped in, so we no longer have a, uh, we have motion in this direction, but we don't have a force in this direction anymore. Okay, we only have a force now in the form of friction, backwards, after everyone's jumped in. So. Uh, friction force, kinetic friction force is 66 newtons. Okay, and we're trying to find the coefficient. And we've got everything we need. Easy peasy. So, coefficient is going to be equal to the friction force, which is 66, divided by the normal force, which is 5,978. And our friction coefficient, or kinetic friction coefficient, is going to be 0 0.011. Okay. So again, remember context. Context matters. So so though though we could after after a whole bunch of calculations figure out what the you know kinetic friction is up here before everyone jumps in. Um, we could find that arguably. Are we going to do that right now? No. Okay, but what we were given is the kinetic friction force after everyone's jumped in. Okay. Whew, excuse me. So, so that's number two. Let's move on to number three. So number three, two people are pushing horizontally on a crate with a mass of 25 kilograms. One person pushing from the right with a force uh, of, of 50 newtons. One person is pushing from the left with a force of 80 newtons. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.05. We have to find the acceleration on the crate. So this one's going to be kind of a two-parter, okay, more or less. So for number three, let's just write down what we know and what we don't know. So the mass of, of specifically the crate here is going, because we're not given the mass of anything else and really nothing else really matters as far as that's concerned. So the mass of the, of the crate is going to be 25 kilograms. The force of the guy to the right, so it, now the guy's to the right, so that means he's pushing to the left. Just keep that in mind. That will matter at the end here. So the force of the guy from the right, the applied force of the guy to the right, is going to be 50 newtons. But remember, to the left, because he's coming from the right, pushing to the left. And then the, the applied force of the guy on the left is going to be 80 newtons to the right. What else do we have? Well, we've got the kinetic, we've got the kinetic uh, coefficient of 0 0.05, and now what we've got to know, well, we've got to solve directly what's the acceleration, but also what's the net force? And not only what is the net force, what is the ultimate net force? Because this net force will say, say force, uh, 
uh, we'll say force uh, before friction. That's what we'll say. That's the force before friction. Whereas in the ultimate one will be force after friction. Because we need both. Okay, so the force before, the force after friction. Okay, here I'll put, or I'll put B and then A. So B before, A after. I, hopefully that won't confuse us terribly here. Okay, and we also need to know what the kinetic friction is. We also need to know what the normal force is. We also need to know what the gravitational force is on this crate. All these lovely things we need to know. Okay, so let's draw the free body diagram. So again, so to the right we've got the applied force from the left of 80 newtons. Kind of a little shorter, a little shorter vector here showing the applied force from the right of 50 newtons. Okay, we've got a, the mass of 25 kilograms. So we'll have to find the gravitational force and then we also need the normal force. Now again, we've, we've done this before, so I'm not gonna walk you through how to do that. So 25.9.8 is gonna be 245 newtons, both for the gravitational force and also the normal force. Boom. So we're off to a good start. Now, again, this, this is the first part we've got to figure out. We've got to figure out what the net force is before friction. So we need to know how much force is being applied and in which direction. So we're going to do the F of net of B, and I'm going to write before, is going to be equal to F sub AL minus F sub AR. So that's going to be easy peasy, 80 minus 50, and that means that we've got 30 newtons of force moving to the right. Okay. So now that we've got that, let's redraw our free body diagram so it accurately represents what we're talking about now so that we can find the kinetic friction force. So we've got now, we've got an applied force of 30 newtons to the right and we're trying to and maybe I, I drew this vector a little too long right here because it we're overcoming the static or the kinetic co or the oh my goodness the, the kinetic friction uh, we're trying to solve for that we've got the force due to gravity which is 245 newtons and the normal force is going to be 245 newtons okay so we just have to solve for this guy. Well, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to solve for it. We've got the coefficient, which is 0 0.05. We also have the, the normal force, which is 245 newtons. Okay. So to find the kinetic force, it's really not that hard. Plug in or put down our, our equation, which then it's going to be oop, 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 F of K is equal to mu of k times f of n. So that's going to turn into 0 0.05 times 245. Okay. And that's going to give us a, oop, a kinetic friction force here of 12.25 newtons, specifically to the left. So this guy, in our free body diagram, we now have this guy. It is equal to 12.25 newtons. Now we're not done yet, obviously, because this is not what we're trying to find here. We're trying to find out the acceleration of the, uh, of the crate. So this is now where the net force after, after friction comes in handy. Okay, because now we're going to do the same thing we did before. Now we've got to take the applied force minus the kinetic friction force. So the applied is going to be the 30 newtons. And they'll be subtract, and we're going to subtract the 12.25 newtons from that guy, which is then going to give us a net force, an overall ultimate net force of 17.75 newtons. Okay. So, but again, we're not done yet. Now we've got to find out what the acceleration is. So that's just gonna be the force 
is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is equal to F divided by M. Acceleration is going to be equal to this net force, the 17.75, divided by the mass, which is 25. And then what we're left with is that the acceleration is going to be equal to 0 0.71 meters per second, specifically to the right. We've got to have, we've got to have that direction. Here is where, so this is where the free body diagrams have to be spot on. This is where the, you know, vectors have to be precise. The guy's from the left but pushing to the right, so that means that the acceleration is going to be in the same direction as our motion, uh, which is also to the right. And we have to indicate that because we've got two opposing forces. We've got really two, two forces opposing one ultimate force, one, one overcoming force. And we've got to know what, what, what the acceleration is in that overcoming force. And in this case, it's going to be 0 0.71 meters per second squared to the right. Okay. So that's number three. And then number four. Number four is a decently long one. It's a bit spooky. Uh, if you don't have your, uh, your five kinematic equations handy, I'd get those handy if I were you. So while you're doing that, I'm going to start setting this up here. So... A 0.17 kilogram hockey puck sliding on an outdoor rink has a velocity of 19 meters per second forward when it suddenly hits a rough patch of ice that is 5.1 meters across. Assume that the coefficient of friction of kinetic friction between the puck and the rough ice is 0.47. We're going to be doing these four things. We're going to draw the free body diagram, calculate the kinetic friction of, on the puck, determine the average acceleration while it's on the rough ice, and then also calculate the puck's velocity as, it's, as it leaves the rough ice and returns to smooth ice, so the final velocity. So let's do what we normally do, establish what we know and what we don't know. So the mass of the puck here, 0 0.17 kilograms. We've got just a velocity, okay, just a velocity, 19 meters per second forward, we have displacement, or at least what will become displacement here. Uh, distance, first it's provided to us in distance, but we're gonna be treating this as displacement. So 5.1 meters, and they give us a kinetic coefficient of 0 0.47. Because, and, and we don't need the static because the puck is already in motion this entire time. Now let's draw the free body diagram. Now this one was, is a bit tricky, because again, it relies upon you to draw this properly. So let's just add, so here's the rough ice, here's the smooth ice, here's the rough ice, okay, and this puck is coming along. Now we've got motion in this direction, but remember we do not have a force, okay, we would if we were talking about the exact moment that the hockey stick was hitting this puck, but the puck's already in motion, so, so there is no force over this, the only force here is going to be the kinetic friction force, which is what we're going to be solving for here, specifically when it's over this, this rough ice. Now we've got, uh, we've got a mass, 0.17 kilograms, and we should also have a normal force. Now we don't know the normal force yet, and we'll solve for that in just a hot second. Okay, maybe add that to the things we don't know, so we don't know the normal force, we don't know the force due to gravity, we don't have the kinetic friction, so we don't have this, we're trying to solve for this, we don't have the acceleration here, and we don't have the final velocity. We do have the initial velocity, technically speaking, uh, and I'll just write it down here, but it's the same thing, it's the, the 19 meters per second forward. Okay. Okay. So this is this answer is number one. Now you didn't have to draw this ice here, but this is the this is the uh, free body diagram that you need to show. Again, there's motion in this direction, but there's no force. So this is what we're looking at here. So quickly, I'm going to solve for the gravitational force, which it's going to be 1.67 uh, newtons. Okay. 
So we've got that. And so number two, calculate the kinetic friction. Well, we, we can do that. So here's number one. Here's number two, excuse the bell. Here's number two. Number two is going to be this bad boy that we've been using so, so often now. Because we've got everything except for him. So let's solve for him. So the kinetic friction is going to be equal to mu of k times f of n. So mu of k is going to be the 0.47. And then the normal force is going to be here the, uh, sorry, the 1.67 newtons. So it looks like here our, 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 our my goodness, kinetic friction 0 0.7, uh, let's go 785 newtons. We're going to say that. Okay. And we're going to say backwards. Okay, so there's the answer for number two. So we can, we can also write that up here now, the 0 0.785 newtons. Okay. Number three. We've got to determine the average acceleration. Okay, so what's the net force? Well, because that's what we should just be immediately looking for. What's the net force? Well, again, we, we don't have force in this direction, but we've got force in this direction. But what direction is the motion? Well, the motion is in this direction. So if the motion is our positive direction, and we've got, no, we've got a force going this direction, that's going to mean that our net force technically speaking, will be negative, or at least it should be associated as such. So the net force here is just the friction force, which is 0 0.785 newtons, okay? Now, to find that acceleration, in this case, deacceleration, because that's what, we're, that's what we're looking for, it's gonna be the F, F net is equal to M times A. So again, we're looking for that average acceleration, so just like always, just like this. I'm going to put this guy up here because I'm running out of room on this piece of paper. So acceleration is going to be equal to the 0 0.785 newtons divided by the mass, which is 0 0.17. So in this case, 0 0.785 divided by 0 0.17, which is going to give me an, an average acceleration of 4.62 meters per second, but going to be backwards. Okay. So because we, we've got this, this backwards, we don't need to put a negative. It's implied it's going to be negative because the positive direction is the you know direction of motion here. So we've got our acceleration. Now how is that going to affect what number four is? Well let's see here. So we've got acceleration here. 4.62 meters per second squared backwards. We have initial velocity, specifically initial velocity of 19 meters per second forward. Well, we're trying to find final velocity, have no clue what that is. So what could we use? What do we have? Well, we do have displacement of 5.1 but we don't have time. We, we don't have time here. Could you solve for the for time? Oh, you can. <laughs> I don't recommend it uh, because what you'll have to do then is you have to substitute. You, you would have to substitute and then also use the, the uh, quadratic formula in order to find time. There's such an easier way to do this. Just simply use, uh, I, think, I, I believe off the top of my head without having it next to me, I believe it's, it's kinematic equation number four. Which one is that specifically? It's this guy. It's the, where'd he go? Let's see. Ah, it is going to be the final, the final velocity squared equal the initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times distance or displacement in this case. We're going to be using this guy, because notice, we've got that, we've got acceleration, and we've got displacement. And we're trying to solve for this guy. Easy peasy. So let's plug her all in. So it'll be 19 squared 
plus two times, ah, so be careful here, two times acceleration backwards. So if it's, if again, if this is supposed to be positive, excuse the bell, it's gonna be negative 4.62, and then times our displacement, which is 5.1, so that's going to give this whole bad boy, on this side at least, 113.876. Then we're going to find the square root. Our final velocity here should be 17.7 .7 meters per second forward. Again, we need that direction. It's a vector quantity. we got to know what direction it's going to be moving towards. Okay. And there you have it. That is all of the check your understandings. So if you still have any questions over any of these guys, make sure you get a hold of me. Um, if not, I will see you in the next one.